Hey everybody, before we get started on today's lesson, I have a gift for you that I hope you'll accept, and that's by simply going down and looking in the description box below and clicking on the link that uh, takes you to the one, two, threes of golf. Now, what are the one, two, threes of golf? This is an ebook that I've written uh, in which I detail what I consider to be the three most important fundamentals for all aspects of the game, starting with grip and posture and ball position and alignment. It's a quick reference book, but taking you all the way through the dynamic aspects of the golf swing itself and landing you in very situational areas like fairway bunkers and side hill lies and everything. And this is my gift to you, uh, your gift to yourself, if you'll just take a moment to click on that. And I need a club, so we can get started on today's lesson. All right, so let's get into today's lesson. And this is to answer the question that's been asked so many times, which basically boils down to, is it absolutely necessary that I use a tee when hitting an iron shot from a par three, from the tee box of a par three? And the short answer is, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a short answer, but then I'll provide something that I think will uh, be insightful for some of you low handicap players too. The short answer is, yeah, as a general rule, you should probably use a tee because the rules allow for it. It's an advantage. And those who adopt a philosophy where they say, well, no, I just, as a philosophy, I don't use a tee because after all, the ball's sitting on the fairway most of the time when I play, why would I uh, interrupt the flow by putting one on a tee? That person is not taking advantage of an easier situation. And that is, when you put a ball on a tee, say it's only a quarter, inch, quarter of an inch off the ground, there's still now at least a little uh, room underneath the ball for you to air, room that there's not when the ball's sitting naked to the earth. And so as a philosophy, I would warm up to the idea of, uh, of learning to hit the ball off a tee because it's simply easier. Now, there are two things that I'd like to say, and this might be more applicable to some of you low handicap players. Number one, you, uh, this, this is applicable to everybody. This is my 125 yard club, it's my A wedge. I have a flag out there here on number 12 that's 125 yards away. And this is my 125 club that I've calibrated while hitting from the fairway uh, on the driving range or anywhere else. This is the club that I hit 125 yards when hitting from the grass, naked to the ground. If you put a peg under it, if you, if you put it on a tee, it's typically gonna fly, uh, fly about five more yards. Why? Because you get more center of gravity underneath the ball, it creates a little bit more launch, a little bit more carry, and it's just gonna go a little bit farther. And the likelihood is that uh, out of say 10 tries, you're gonna catch it clean more often. So you'll get a, more, a greater average result just simply from that. And so this, if this is my normal 125 club, I regard it as my 130 club. Uh, whenever I'm hitting it off of a tee. And so let's see how this goes. Again, one, uh, a one-shot experiment doesn't tell the whole story, but I really think that I can hit this thing past that flag back there. I've got a camera over there. Let's see how it goes. And I pushed it off to the right anyway, so that really doesn't matter. All right, so I was hoping to hit a, a great shot for you, but I'm over there on the fringe right. Now, let's get into the part two. This is, this is the part that I, I want to share with you and something that I think is... Um, this is something a lot of you haven't considered. I was playing when I first turned pro, this has been about 22 or three years ago, I was playing with a fellow by the name of Chuck Thorpe. Now some of you remember uh, Jim Thorpe, the senior tour player, not the, the, the Choctaw Indian from the uh, early 1900s, uh, the decathlete. I'm talking about the Jim Thorpe, the golfer. Well, his brother Chuck, who's also in the Black Golf Hall of Fame, is someone I got to play a lot with. And he set all the course records and all the tournament records. I remember he shot 20 under for three days in our yearly event there at the golf course where I played. If some of you have read my book, Muni, he is the character Hardpan in there, all right? And, and in which I detail in that book, lots of what he did. Anyway, he and I were playing. And I remember there was one uh, hole there at Muni where they had a false front. And the three of us, first three players, went flag hunting and it spun completely off the green. And when it came Chuck's turn to hit, he came up there and he didn't use a tee. He made himself a little bump in the ground and put his ball on top of that and then he made a swing. His ball landed right beside the flag. Now ours had landed pin high, maybe not right beside the flag like his did, but pin high and ours had rolled off. His landed right beside the flag and stopped and stayed about two feet from the hole and he made the putt. And this, the, this body language and the, the way he walked and the certainty with which he did that told me he knew what he was doing the entire time. Now after that, I decided I was going to try that on that hole. Bump. And I made myself a bump. I put the ball in there and all it did was destroy my shot. I hit it fat. And then I did that sometime later. I hit it fat again. Now I'm 0 for 2 and I just gave up on that completely. Well, one time Chuck and I got to talking and I brought up the fact that he had done that and wanted to know all about what he'd done. He said, yeah, uh, I don't really remember that, Bobby, but uh, I'm sure I was just trying to take some spin out of the shot. I said, what do you mean take some spin out of the shot? And we went out on the tee. And he said, yeah, if the hole's there, you go like this, 
That creates the land that moves back this way. A wall is now on this side and you put the ball here and you built yourself a launching pad. And if the, if the grass happens to be blow, uh, leaning that way, then that's going to take some spin out of the shot. And you can count on it not, uh, it not roll, spinning off the green as much when you give it that uh, sort of a setup. And I got to thinking about it. I had done it just exactly the opposite. I was creating the wall from over here and the wall was over here and so it was a bunch of bunched up earth and I was putting the ball there, but I gave myself a little lip to get caught on right there. No wonder I chunked it. So if you're gonna be the type who does decide that you're gonna hit the ball right off the ground, then I suggest you do like I've done ever since I've learned that from Chuck. Put yourself a little something right there. Get that grass going there and that's at least gonna set a launching pad up to where you know you can hit the shot. And if the grass also happens to be leaning that way, then you can also count on it taking some spin out of your shot. Now, for some of you who are just trying to get the ball on the green, that may not be so insightful in such a way that it might help you. But for others who have that certain hole that you always spin it off, I think you'll find that very helpful. Let's see what we can do here. See, can I get it to stop? Well, that's better. And that's gonna go past it and roll back. Oh shoot, that might go in. Go in. That would be unbelievable. Holy moly. Okay. I thought for a second that went in. All right. So uh, again, but that, that didn't exactly prove my point. I said it would stop, but it landed on a backstop and rolled down. It landed on the side of the hill. So, so there we have it with that. So as I'm saying, as a general rule, I mean, if you're entitled to a good lie, why take advantage of a good lie when you're entitled to a perfect one? All right. And so use a T if you, if, uh, if everything else is the same, use a T. And if you decide you're going to put it on the ground, then uh, maybe you're always going to bump it by going on this side and bumping back toward you. And that will build you a little launching pad, something that's pretty friendly uh, for most of your iron shots. I want to thank you all for tuning in with me, and I look forward to seeing you next week.